Welcome to the Prophecy for America broadcast, and this is Brother Larry, coming to you with God's truth from God's Word. Hello everyone, this is Brother Larry bringing you our first broadcast called Prophecy for America. Now we did a series of broadcasts on what was called the House of Israel and we decided to rename our program that we can reach a lot more people because our main message is really prophecy for this country in our time. We are reaching the very time, the very hour, where is mentioned in prophecy. Now, last weekend I was given instructions, and and I when I talk to you, I'll be talking to you, and I have been ordered to relay these messages to God's people. Now, first, let me, if you, this is the first time you found me on YouTube. Let me give you a little bit of background that you'll see where I where I've uh, come from. Now first, I grew up in the Lutheran Church. Yes, that is the Church of Sardis. They're very, very spiritually dead, my friends. But that's where I grew up. That was my uh, background. And I went through confirmation, like most uh, young people do. I believe it was around age 14. And I believe the program lasted two summers. And we had to work with our local pastor through this, this uh, uh, series of teachings. We would learn the catechism. We would learn all the important things that you must know in the Lutheran Church. Well, my particular pastor was well known if young people would act up in church. He would call them down by name. He would embarrass them in front of the whole congregation. That's what those type of pastors did back then well our particular church we didn't have a big church we probably would hold a hundred or so in our in our church it would hold maybe another 30 more in the balcony and then we had probably another hundred or so overflow in our basement that they can hear the service and during a during the Easter season or the Easter service we probably had a lot of people in the overflow areas and then you would never see him again until the next Easter. Well, that's the way it was. Well, when I was up in the balcony, a few times a pastor did call me down. You know, being 13, 14 year olds, you know how boys can be. Well, many times he would look at me. I guess he's thinking I might be doing something. But basically, I felt back then that he was telling me I was going to be a pastor. So the Holy Spirit, even though this church was very dead spiritually... He was talking to me, or talking, the Holy Spirit was talking through this pastor to tell me of what things will be happening in the future. Now, I'm not going to go on all the different things I went through through my life and with my walk with the Holy Spirit. But the thing is, the Holy Spirit started teaching me prophecy back in the early 80s. I was born again uh, in 1983. I went to a Pentecostal church. And uh, I was water baptized, and then I received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I wasn't, uh, I didn't have gift of tongues then, but I did babble in tongues. I did use it as a prayer lang language, but not very much in the beginning. It just got better over time. But my main gift at that time was discernment, because at that time I was attending Catholic Mass, and that particular gift is, is needed. And then later I found out, 12 years later, that I do have a gift of prophecy. Now, that doesn't mean you're a prophet, even though now I know I might be. Okay? And I'm going to say that the Lord says, I will speak for him. And that's what a prophet does. I don't predict the future. I tell you what God's word says in prophecy. That's my commission. So, from the very beginning, the Holy Spirit has been teaching me two major things. 
One, the meaning of the seven churches of Asia Minor and how to identify them. And that's some of the things I have to talk to on some of these churches. I have to tell them what God says to that church. Second is the chapter in Revelation, chapter 18. Now, all through the years, from 1983 until this past year, I felt I was the only person that knew the meaning of this chapter. Because most people, even with a PhD, really didn't get a good grasp of the meaning of the prophecy in chapter 18. Now, the Holy Spirit taught me through the years that the book of Revelation is not written in order. Matter of fact, it's a series of smaller books. Now, as some of you might have watched some of my other programs, I would mention that verse 4, and I'll read that. In verse 4, it says, Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people! so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. Now, some people, and I thought too, that was the rapture. It's not the rapture, my friends. God is warning his people to come out of her, or they will share in her plagues. Now, I have some other verses here. We have uh, Jeremiah 51.45. Now, the thing is about prophecy, you're always going to find other verses that back up another verse. So it says here, come out of her, my people. Run for your lives. Run from the fierce anger of the Lord. That is in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 54, verses 45. And then we have 2 Corinthians 6, verse 17, and it says, Therefore, come out from them and be separate says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing and I will receive you. And then in Isaiah, and by the way, in Jeremiah, that particular verse is actually repeated a second time in that chapter. Then in Isaiah 52 11, it says, depart, depart, go out from her, touch no unclean thing, come out from it and be pure. And you, you who carry the articles of the Lord's house. Now, what does chapter 18 say? Why is chapter 18 so important, my friends? Chapter 18 is an event that will happen around the time of the rapture. The way it looks, it's going to happen prior to the rapture. But it's going to have a major effect around the world, my friends. And this, as a matter of fact, it's not a religion they're talking about. Some pastors, some teachers say this is a religion. No. It's a city. Now, some people say it's Babylon. No. Nothing in Babylon even comes close to what the city is. No one. Nowhere. And this is an end time event, my friends. There's only one city in the world that is depicted from this chapter. Now, let me start from the beginning. And again, I apologize uh, you know, I don't have the best eyesight in the world, but I do the best I can. Remember, everything I tell you is coming from the Spirit. And I have it deep in my heart to make sure you understand this event. Because this is the next event in the prophecy timeline, my friends. This will come any time. Now, after this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven. And he had great authority. And the earth was eliminated by his splendor. With a mighty voice, he shouted, Fallen! Fallen! Is Babylon the Great. She has become a home for demons. And a haunt for every evil spirit. A haunt for every unclean and detestable bird. For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of my come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. See, that's not the rapture. He's telling his people to come out of her, or they will receive her plagues or share in her sins and receive her plagues for her sins are piled up in heaven and God has 
remembered her crimes. Give back to her as she has given. Pay her back double for what she has done. Mix her double portion from her own cup. Give her as much torture and grief as the glory and luxury she has given herself. In her heart she boasts, I sit as queen. I am not a widow and I will never mourn. Therefore in one day her plagues will overtake her. It will be done very quickly my friends. Death, mourning, and famine. She will be consumed by fire. For mighty is the Lord God who judges her. Now when the kings of the earth who committed adultery with her and shared in her luxury see the smoke of her burning they will weep and mourn over her terrified at her torment they stand far off and cry whatever this is my friends people can see it from far off whoa whoa our great old great city old babylon city of power by one hour your doom has come one hour, my friends, one hour, she will be brought down. The merchants of the earth who weep and mourn over her because no one buys their cargoes anymore. Cargoes anymore. No one buy. I say, cargoes of gold, silver, precious stones, and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet cloth of every sort, of citron wood, and articles of every kind made of ivory, costly wood, bronze, iron, marble, and cargoes of cinnamon and spice, and incense, and myrrh, and frankincense, and wine, and olive oil, of fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and carriages and bodies of souls of men this place is going to be deep in the garment industry and many other things too my friends and they're dealing with cargo this is not a church my friend this is not a, this is not a religion this is a place they will say the fruit you long for is gone from you all your riches and splendor have vanished never to be recovered the merchants who sold these things and gain their wealth from her will stand far off terrified at her torment they will weep and mourn and cry out woe woe O great city dressed in fine linen purple and scarlet and glittering with gold precious stones and pearls in one hour such rich wealth has been brought to ruin one hour my friends one hour and these merchants will be far off and they can see every sea captain and all who traveled by ship these sailors and all who earn their living from the sea will stand far off when they are when they see the smoke of her burning they will exclaim was there ever a city like this great city and they will throw dust on their heads and were weeping and mourning crying out of course that's a Jewish thing throwing dust okay whoa whoa oh great city where all who had ships on the sea because rich through her wealth in one hour she has been brought to run rejoice over her O heaven rejoice saints and apostles and prophets God has judged her for the way she's treated you then a mighty angel picked up a boulder the size of a large millstone and threw it into the sea and said with such violence the great city of Babylon will be thrown down never be found again 
the music of harpers and musicians, flute players, and trumpeters will never be heard in you again. Again, this place is a center of music. That's not what's found in the Middle East, my friends. This center is a this city is a center of music. No workman of any trade will ever be found in you again. The sound of a millstone will never be heard in you again. The light of a lamp. Do you hear that, my friends? The light of a lamp will never shine in you again. The voice of a bridegroom and bride will never be heard in you again. Again, that's a throwback from Noah. They married right up to the time they closed the door of the ark. Your merchants were the world's great men. By your magic spell, all the nations were led astray. In her was found the blood of prophets and of the saints and of all who have been killed on earth. And you're saying, Brother Larry, what are you talking about? All right, here is a great city, a powerful city, a city that deals with sea merchandise. It has shipping, cargo. It's a major musical center. It is a major textile center. It has a great light. And it has a lot of things going on in merchandise. And it also is a major voice piece around the world. And it shares lies. Now, what city could be this city, my friends? What city could be the city? It's a harbor. It has all kinds of different people. That's why it's called Babylon. So we have all kinds of people, all kinds of industry, all kinds of shipping, all kinds of wealth. It might even have a section in this city named after a queen. There's a borough in New York City called Queens, my friends. And yes, New York City in America matches all of the characteristics that is found in chapter 18, my friends. Now, again, once New York City is hit by a nuclear weapon, and by the way, it's like throwing like a millstone into the sea. That's how it will be brought down. It's obvious as some kind of a projectile, my friends. And I did a little bit of study, yes, Destruction won't be as, as far if you put a missile in the sea, but the destruction will be very, very, very strong in a small area or a smaller area, okay, within the, like the, tri the, the tri-state in that area. It'll be very devastating. So New York City is the only city, my friend, that matches the, how this city is described. So follow me for a minute. And you've heard the other broadcasts on the House of Israel. Remember, when New York City is destroyed, it will cause a massive financial panic around the world. You said, Brother Larry, how do you know that? Well, I remember what happened both times when the Twin Towers were hit. And it had a slight correction in the market. What would happen if the whole city is destroyed? Never mind if the trading industry has an off-site location, which they do. But that doesn't matter. Because, let me give you an example. Back around 1987 or so, we had a fire in Japan. Or either in Japan or Taiwan, I don't remember which. And it was near where the factories that made memory chips back then. And back then, when you built a computer, you had to put in all nine memory chips for each row. So if your computer had 256 kilobytes of memory, you would use nine 256 kilobyte chips to make up that memory. Well, the memory price spiked because of the fire. And the memory prices peaked at around $20 per chip. Well, if you do the math, that's $180 per row, and that's almost $200. That's $400, almost $400 for 512 kilobytes, okay? And then 640 kilobytes would be well over $500 back then. 
And the reason the price went up because it was being price were set by speculators. And the speculators went crazy when they had the fire. I think this probably last for maybe a month. I don't remember. But when they found out later that the fire did not affect the factories that made the memory chips, well, then the prices of memory started to go back down. So what am I saying here? What I'm saying, when you have a major market like New York City become destroyed, my friends, you will have a panic across the world, market by market. Like I said in another broadcast, it will be like buying a stick of gum. You'll have to take a or fill an entire city bus with $1,000 bills to buy a stick of gum. That's just how bad it will be. And yes, this kind of thing will usher in some type of a very fancy financial system, which is found in Revelations chapter 13. So, what am I doing right now, my friends? I'm warning my Christian friends. If you have a Christian friend or family member in the New York area, tell them about this chapter. Tell them they need to be ready to go. They need to, it's not the rapture here. God is warning his people to come out of her. And that's what this broadcast is doing. It's warning God's people to come out of her and you won't share in her sins and her plagues. I can't make it any clearer. I just can't make it any clearer, my friends. You must come out of her and come out of her soon. When is this going to happen? I have no idea. I have some gut feelings maybe, but I have no idea when this may occur. But I tell you what, if you look at all the signs, yes, it looks like all these things can come to pass soon. And yes, the rapture probably will happen very soon after this. I don't know how off, how soon. I really don't know. I really don't know, my friends. I just know this is going to happen. This is going to happen soon. The Holy Spirit has been after me for 30 years to talk about this chapter. 30 years, my friends. He's been very, very patient. And my order is to get this out that people can understand. Read this chapter yourself. Look at these other verses that I just gave you. Now, one of them has double meanings. I believe it's the one in um, Jeremiah. It's got a double meaning in that one. It talks about Babylon of the day. Then it's got some things in there that's end time. Yes, it is. So read those chapters, my friends. And I believe that's, um, that is Jeremiah chapter 51. So read that chapter. okay? And I don't want anyone to perish. Not even the sinners. I want the sinners that are out there that don't have the Lord. And when I say sinners, you know, when you truly are a born-again Christian and you truly have, has made Jesus as the Lord of your life, what does that mean, my friends? That means that you make most of the decisions and then if you have problems, you have Jesus help you. But yet, for the most part, you do most of it on your own. Is that what you do? Is that what the Lord wants you to do? You remember the manna that came from heaven to feed his people? And he told them that he couldn't store the manna. They had to eat their fill. And then the rest of it had to be thrown out because it won't keep for the next day. He was teaching them that God will provide. He also provided them meat at the end of the day. And then on the Sabbath, the day before, they were given two portions of manna. You understand what I'm saying? He wants you to be his slave, my friends. If you're not his slave, he's not your master. And if he's not your master, well, then you're serving two masters and you can't do that. You can't serve the Lord and serve the world, serve the job, serve the government, serve the family, anything else. You have to be a slave of the Lord. I mean what I say, my friends. You cannot serve two masters. And if you do, you're basically committing a idolatry. You really are. So, the, the people that think you're Christian are the ones you know that you're not. Come to the Lord. 
Read the Bible. Read the book of John. Read the book of Acts. Then read the book of Revelations. And I say Revelations for a reason. Technical term is Revelation with no S. I contend it's Revelations with an S. It's plural. Because there's more than one book in the book of Revelations. That's correct. There's more than one book in there. So it's plural. Do those things. Don't read it one time. Read it many times. Read it again and again and again and again. And then the Holy Spirit is going to teach you. The Holy Spirit is going to convict you. Then put the Lord in your heart. Be his slave. Repent of your sins. Yes, you'll stumble from time to time. That's the problem with sin. But as a born-again Christian, you're not going to do it on purpose. That's how he tests you. That's how he molds you. That's how he makes you better. And then, my friends, you need to be baptized of the water and then baptized of the Holy Spirit. And one of the, one of the indications you are baptized of the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. You may not have the gift of tongues, but you might have a prayer language of tongues. My friends, I love all of you. I want all of you to be in heaven. And I want to see all of you up there. And right now, our main concern is God's judgment on this land. And you'll say, why is God judging our land? Why? What have we done wrong? Well, number one, this country was based on Christian values. We've turned our back, oh, uh, back from those values, my friends. So we threw... God and the Bible out of the schools. And number two, we are now killing innocent babies. These babies are saints. That's what's talked about in chapter 17. The great whore is on the beast with the blood of the saints. That's what that's meant by that. All these babies being killed. I don't care, but God will not tell me those things. Okay? Those are private, that's private information. But he does give us, give us the signs. And one of the major ones is their wars and rumors of wars, nations against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there's earthquakes in diverse places. Like I said, you can go on the internet right now and find probably 50 to 100 earthquakes that happened today. That's correct. We know about them within minutes after they happen around the world. So we know when earthquakes happen in diverse places because we have the internet and we have international news. And then if it's a major earthquake, you'll find that on international news within minutes, or at least within the hour. So my friends, God bless all of you. Thank you for viewing this first broadcast of the Prophecy for America. And I'm going to do more of these broadcasts, try to do one every week for you. And pray for me. Now, again, our, I'm going to use the old email address. And our email address is houseof.israel at yahoo.com. Okay? Again, that's houseof.israel.com. God bless. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for joining today's broadcast of the Prophecy for America with Brother Larry. If you wish to contact us, email us at houseof.israel at yahoo.com. Again, that's houseof.israel at yahoo.com. So, thank you and God bless. All my